Welcome back, Commander. In this video, we'll be featuring the European Alliance as an allied subfaction from a Red Alert 2 mod called Mental Omega. Mental Omega is a free unofficial expansion pack for Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 Yuri's Revenge. It started off as a balance modification created by Speeder and Mevitor and was first released in 2005. After a few years, it had grown into an unofficial sequel with new campaigns for the Allies, Soviets, and Yuri. Now, version 3.3 marks the end of the long road and is the final iteration of the Mental Omega mod series. Enhanced with the powerful Ares expansion DLL, Mental Omega 3.3 introduces an entirely new faction to the play, the technologically advanced Phone Revolt, as well as continues to bring new features to command and conquer Red Alert 2 Yuri's Revenge, while maintaining a strong sense of gameplay balance. But before we begin, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel so we can help deliver more info on the battlefield. The Euro Alliance relies heavily on high-tech weaponry provided to them by Stein's Tick, a research group led by the late Albert Einstein's protege, Siegfried. Stein's Tech have devoted themselves to the further development of technology invented by Einstein for military applications. This means exotic weaponry such as chrono, weather-controlling prism and mirage tech features. Due to the previous assault upon Europe by the Russians, the Alliance has always been wary of another attack, fearing retaliation from the Soviets once the Americans had ceased their occupation of Russia. This resulted in the focus on primarily defensive and supportive technology within European armies, designed to remove threats quickly and efficiently while maintaining base operations without disruptions. There are 13 unique subfaction features for the Euro Alliance, and we'll get into them one by one. Siegfried is the man that pilots the Zeitgeist, a massive craft that wields some of the Alliance's most advanced criminal technology. He can bombard enemies from a great distance with a cutting-edge weapon that creates a small, unstable chrono vortex, inflicting a huge amount of damage to anyone caught up in it. When ordered to deploy, Siegfried creates a large, stable chrono field that temporarily phases himself and all friendly units in the area out of this plane of existence, becoming completely impervious to most outside influence. However, phasing out makes any movement impossible. Due to the bulkiness and weight of his craft, Siegfried can't fit into most smaller transports and cannot cross water. Despite that, he can still make use of allied air transports. The European Shield Command controls the Force Shield which can protect your structures from any sort of enemy attacks for a short while. It also provides the access to an emergency lightning rod, which is useful during power shortage situations. Moreover, the Shield Command acts as the technology expander for the Euro Alliance. The Force Shield is a support power that creates an energized, impenetrable barrier to protect your structures from any damage for 30 seconds. The Lightning Rod is a support power that, if placed anywhere on the battlefield, will temporarily give you 1,000 power units for emergency purposes. The Rod will also increase the fire power of all Thor gunships nearby by 25%. The Ultra Dome is a unique Euro Alliance device which has been designed to synchronize all the defenses in its vicinity and make it easier for their systems to exchange information regarding the enemy positions, past, present, and in the predicted future. The defensive structures around it will deal bigger damage than usual. Due to its complicated internal composition and technology, Ultra Domes are scarce in numbers. A commander can only build one of them on the battlefield. More resourceful of the commanders found it to be a non-issue, however, as the Ultra Dome can still be teleported around with a chronolift to the spots that require better defense the most. The Thor is the most impressive unit in the European arsenal. Created by a small independent arms developer associated with Secret in the past, the Thor has become the flagship of the European armed forces, often seen on the battlefield where the European alliance sets its military might on full display. Its onboard Mi Yalnir conduction drums can be chronoshifted outside the gunship at small ranges create lightning bolts out of thin air at the locations marked by the Thor with laser pointers. The bolts will then vaporize infantry and heavily damaging aircraft within a radius, while the drones instantly vanish. The gunship also acts as a command unit in the field, as it is authorized to order personnel on the ground to divert to defensive tactics for a limited time. This makes the Thor a welcome sight to all allied forces, the mere sight of it enough to instill awe in any soldier. To face the threat of the vast manpower reserves of the Soviets, the Euro Alliance found a resolution that fits within their defensive strategy during the conflict. 
Knowing that during the Second Great War the Soviets were simply sending hordes of badly trained conscripts together with NCO that had little to no knowledge about commanding and operating on the field, it became clear the infantry hordes were vulnerable to attacks from hidden positions and great distances. Skilled snipers have no problem dealing with the Soviet troops, causing panic and fear in their lines, making them chaotic and unorganized on the field. After the war, the countries of Euro Alliance decided that there should be one sniper in an infantry company. The Cavalier Medium Battle Tank is the continuation of the medium tank from the Second Great War. Although its main features have remained relatively unchanged, such as its 105mm cannon, the Cavalier is faster and better armored than its predecessor. The Cavalier is the bread and butter of every Euro Alliance armor column, effective at destroying enemy armor and structures. This tank also provides a middle ground between the powerful but slow Rhino heavy tank utilized by the Russians and the quick but lightly armored lasher light tank used by Psy Corps. Due to the nature of the warhead used, the tank's effectiveness against infantry is mediocre at best. The most prominent improvement to the tank is the integrated firing enhancement system soldiers jokingly called a window. The system allows the tank to fire its shells at an increased rate after a short warm-up time dealing more damage in less time as long as it remains locked on a target. The Arkan Armored Multirole Carrier is a derivative of the original Striker model used by the United States, designed for more intense combat situations. Now equipped with heavier armor, the Archon is the most durable of IFE, making it a viable defense option. Mirage tanks are some of the most advanced anti-armor units in the Euro Alliance arsenal. Developed in the Steins Tech Laboratories in Germany, the tank has the unique ability to camouflage itself as a tree as long as the tank is stationary. In addition to being undetectable on radar, this allows the Mirage tank to remain hidden in plain view. With its kinetic energy penetrator cannon, the tank is more than a match for enemy armor, especially during ambushes. The battlefield is a dangerous place, but when even the trees are gunning for you, you know there is nowhere you can hide. The Harrier is the primary fighter jet for the European forces and an effective tank buster. Built with mobility in mind, this jet makes use of modern vertical takeoff and landing logic, allowing for runways to be considerably smaller and in turn allowing for the aircraft to be built and rearmed on the battlefield. This lethal fighter is equipped with advanced high-explosive anti-tank missiles. When a missile hits an enemy, a large hole is blasted into the tank, exposing vulnerable systems for a short time. This allows the Harrier to either follow up with another missile for increased damage or allow other forces to finish it off. The Charon tank is the pinnacle of European technology. Its neutron cannon, a larger, more powerful version of the one used by Chrono Legionnaires, has the ability to instantly erase any unit targeted by it from this time and space. This allows the tank to immediately remove threats without any chance of retaliation. The sheer amount of energy used for this unstoppable weapon means that the Charon has a long cooldown, making it vulnerable to enemies after it has fired. This weapon is not only technologically a fearsome weapon, but psychologically as well. Soldiers and tank pilots find the prospect of being flung into a completely different dimension of far more terrifying fate than mere death. When it comes to artillery, the Prism tank is the go-to for every European commander, bending light into a solid beam capable of inflicting great destructive force. Due to the hefty weight of the tank, the charge couplings usually built in prism towers were removed to allow for better mobility. This makes the prism tank ineffective against armored vehicles. The tank's prism refractor is not only effective at destroying enemy structures, but can also function as an anti-infantry weapon in a pinch. This ends the Subfaction Spotlight series for Mental Omega mod for Red Alert 2. If you want more Subfaction Spotlight series like these, please click the like button and comment down below on what you want to see next. It will greatly help me deliver more top secret info to you and to our comrades. Until next time, Commander. Battle Control, terminated.